There's a ton of well-crafted worlds in gaming. To name a few, there's endless praise heaped on Breath of the Wild, and for good reason. In Skyrim, it's a universal experience to run like heck from a giant you severely underestimated. That is, until he sends you into orbit when he catches you. There's cruising in Night City in Cyberpunk, until of course you have to make a slight turn, and then you realize that all the roads in the future are apparently made out of ice. And getting curb stomped by an arch griffin because you were only level 10 in a level 50 zone in The Witcher 3 is another great experience. I joke, but these worlds are extremely memorable for a reason. Frankly, a good world is one of the best ways to guarantee I will need an intervention to get me to stop playing your game long enough to pretend that I have a social life. But today, we're jumping into one that I think tops them all. Of all the amazing worlds I've been in, I can't think of one that's a more complete package than Fallout 4. Now hold on, I hear you and I want to clarify. I'm not vouching for everything in the game. There's a lot to criticize. But, if there's a better world out there, I can't think of it. And yes, I know a lot of people are going to disagree, and that is, frankly, wonderful. If you have a different world you think is better and I haven't given you pause by the end of the video, throw it down in the comments and I'll be sure to check it out. Who knows, maybe it'll get its own video. But hear me out first. Anyways, get comfy on the couch and welcome to the hangout. Let's jump into this, shall we? Alrighty, so like any good run in the wasteland, we have to start by creating our character, and this reminds me of a podcast that I listened to recently that Todd Howard was on. It was like a two to three hour podcast on the Lex Friedman podcast, and it was actually quite interesting. Uh, might talk about that a little bit later, but that gave me an idea for what our character is going to be in this particular run through the wasteland. So we're not going to be making Lex Friedman, but we are going to instead be making his strange step cousin, Flex. Now, you might see that he's been hitting the protein in the gym quite hard. Now, I did attempt to do some things that would make him look something like Lex, I'll be honest with you, there weren't eyelids that said I don't sleep enough uh, for that, and the hairstyles really didn't make it work, but hey, this is close enough. This isn't Lex, this is Flex. Let's go ahead and jump on into the wasteland with Flex. Well, it appears that we're about to have an unwanted visitor here, Mr. Trenchcoat Man. It looks like it's the Vault Tech Jehovah's Witnesses or something like that. All right, let's go answer the door, see what we got going on here. Whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. No, no worries, sir. Then I'm glad you <laughs> Why does my guy keep turning around every time oh, I pick a dialogue too. option? This game's not broken at all. There's no bugs. Don't worry about it. Well, I... All right, so obviously his name is Flex. And of course, with a name like that and a build like he has, or a body like he has, of course, we're going to have to do a strength and... In... Uh, oop, that's perception. I meant strength and endurance run. All right, so we're headed on up to the vault, and what you're going to notice here, actually, is going to be a setup for one of the first things I'd like to point out. As you can see, as we're about to get in and the nuke is about to go off, there's a lot of people standing out here, and that'll be relevant in just a moment. Now, right out of the gate here, we're going to get something that actually kind of sets apart the Fallout 4 world from a world like, say, Skyrim, and that would be the junk. As you know, in Skyrim, for example, the junk is going to be worth basically, like, a piece of gold if you pick up a wooden plate or something like that. Whereas in Fallout 4, all of the junk has a purpose. It's made of ceramic and it's made of metal and it's made of uh, fiber optics and all that sort of fun stuff. That is something that I think plays extremely well in this world. And I'll explain why a little bit later. Ah, uh, yes, our first look at the desolate wasteland. Here's one thing I want to point out, and this is sort of a bigger idea, a bigger theme that I'm going to be using to evaluate the world in this game and show you just why I think this world is so good. When we walked up here, there were people standing at this fence. Now, probably when they heard that the bombs were going off and everything, some people scattered. But, when we walked up here, there were some people still standing here. So it makes sense that there would be skeletons there, and it adds to the to the coherence of the world. It makes sense that the, the skeletons are there because we just saw them. It just makes sense. Everything that I would expect to see based on what happened in this game, or what the game has told me happened, I can go verify. And that's one metric that I think is very important when it comes to evaluating worlds in general. Does it get better? or worse, the more I pay attention. I would suggest to you that Fallout 4's world keeps getting better the closer you pay attention. There are a couple things that I think are fair criticisms that could be made. I might even point one or two of them out along the way, but the overall message I would give about the world of Fallout 4 is the closer you pay attention, the better it gets. So let me show you several examples of what I'm talking about and several different ways that I think the Fallout 4 world 
excels. All right, so here we're coming up to one of the areas that was the one that grabbed my attention, and that's, that showed me I need to pay a little bit more attention to this world. And the more that I look into it, the more the game actually rewards me for paying attention. I'll show you what I mean in just a second after I greet this cute little doggy. All right, now that we've massacred all those hideous little mole rats, I will show you what I mean. In the red rocket here, there's a terminal. What you're going to see is this last paragraph says, Hey, if nature's going to favor us with a cave right below the shop, who am I to argue? So when I first read that, I was like, wait a second. A cave right below the shop? And so I, I was like, is, is there actually a cave around here? Can I, can I find a cave and a little bit of searching later? What do you, what do you know? Lo and behold... There is indeed a cave right here. I hadn't found it before, but just by paying attention and by reading the terminal, the game rewarded me because all of a sudden I found another place I can explore, a place that's going to have mole rats and a little bit of loot and stuff like that. It actually helps you out with your uh, early game and your startup and everything, and it's all because I paid attention. I've made that case to people before, and they're like, yeah, but I hate reading. And that's really going to determine how you think about this particular one, because we're headed to the West Everett Estates, where I think the world building is phenomenal. But it's going to depend a little bit on how much you like reading and reading terminals. I think it's an unobtrusive, natural way to communicate the information. A lot of other people just don't like reading terminals. I get it, but I'll show you some more examples of the game rewarding you just by paying attention in just a second. All right, like I said, we're headed over to the West Everett Estates, but here actually is one thing that I think is a little underused in this game, but still a really neat thing that, that the world does. And that is this little quest here, a Thicket Excavations. If you're not aware, you can talk to this guy over here, Silly Mathis, and, um, He's going to give you a little bit of a quest. So basically, he's going to have you go ahead and plug some holes. Um, I'm going to let that stand without comment because we're talking about holes in the pipelines here, um, which I suppose is a comment, which I just said I was going to let it stand with. Syfix, take that part out. That makes me sound really stupid. No, well, yeah, I know I'm stupid, but no, you got you to gotta take it out. That's what the editor's here for. Okay, you know what? Fine. You know, you, you do you. Just don't expect me to to make good content anymore, if that's what, how it's going to be. Anyway, so he's going to give you a quest to go plug some holes in the pipes down here so that they can basically pump out all the water. I don't know why I'm taking the elevator. You can fall into water, fine. But anyway, once you turn this in, you're going to have a little bit of a fight. Once you hit the switch, you're, you're definitely kicking something off here. Now, this is the part where I might have to awkwardly mention that we're playing on very hard just to make it a little bit more interesting, and oh my goodness... Um, well, this is awkward. Oh, hey, look, you took out Sully. <laughs> Spoiler alert, that's not a bad thing. Anyway, all right, so we won the fight, and uh, time to talk to Sully. All righty, so we got our payment. And I bring this up because, again, there's something the world is going to do that's pretty cool here. As you can see, we leave this area right now, and the water is filling this place. But, as he said... His intention is to drain the water. We're going to come back a little bit later. I'm going to show you what happens because this is a cool little thing the world does. You basically just have to give it a little bit of time and then come back here and something cool is going to happen. We will show you that a little bit later. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the West Everett Estates. Am I already noticed? Son of a biscuit. I was going to give a whole intro speech and everything here. Hi there. Okay. Well, that's about how I expected that to go the first try. Oh, random dead guy. Nice butt, though. Like, at least you were displaying your best features when you died. So, there's that. You can at least take heart. Like, knowing that you went out like a boss. Oh, this is not going too well. Oh, well, okay. So, yeah, this is going to take some time. Oh, fudge. Okay, well, there's death number three. Apparently, there's a landmine there. Alrighty. Well, that approach didn't exactly work, but uh, we're getting there slowly but surely. Well, after some thorough scientific research, I discovered that indeed we are extraordinarily too low level for the West Everett Estates. There's just the, only so much that you could beat your head against a brick wall before you realize I'm pathetic. Uh, I'm sure everybody's seen it, but this is just one of the things I wanted to show off about this world. There's so many places like this where you just come in, you kill some ghouls, and then, lo and behold, there's a root cellar. 
And a little unassuming area down here. Turn the radio off because, you know, copyright claims are the worst. Anyway, you open the door here and lo and behold, we got ourselves a ghoul. Wayne Gorski. Once you hack the terminal, you come to the statement of intent and you can read on about this. But what's interesting is that just this random cabin out in the woods, there is a named ghoul in here who has a backstory and has a personality. It's plenty fine enough for them to just put a cabin out here, put some loot in it, put some ghouls there for you to have an encounter and move on. But instead, they decided to take the time to put a little bit of effort into just fleshing out this cabin, this cellar here. Continuing on, we come to actually one of my favorite uh, places. It's certainly not quite up to what the West Everett Estates is, but this would be the Boston Mayoral Shelter. One thing that ought to catch your attention right off the bat, and again, it's what happens when I pay closer attention. Does the world look better or does it look worse? And I'm not just talking graphics. There's a backhoe or a, a bobcat. What, what the heck is this thing called again? A, a plow digger thing? Whatever. We, we got one of these big yellow things here that they apparently ripped the door off with chains. That's not normal, uh, you would say. And you've got skeletons laying around here. You've got military skeletons. And then you've got other skeletons that just look like they're dressed in random peasant garb. Uh, once you enter in here, you're going to see more skeletons. So we've got military skeletons and then also some lady in a dress. Or some dude in a dress. I don't know. It could be either or, I suppose. I guess we'll never know. Continuing on, we come down in here. And then suddenly you see a big pile of bodies stacked up at the door here. The question becomes, what was happening? So we've got a trail of bodies leading us in here. The door ripped off at the front. It looks like there must have been some sort of commotion here where a bunch of people died, seemingly trying to break into here. And the whole time, <laughs> dog me just opened a door. Good job, buddy. Apparently he's part raptor. That thing's part raptor. What, what is happening is the environment itself is giving us a narrative. Before we ever read a terminal, before we ever hear a hollow tape, you can see something happened. It looks like peasants were ripping the door off the Boston mayoral shelter and trying to break in. Now, when you get into the Boston mayoral shelter, you're going to be able to find a few keys. And what you'll find is a skeleton in a bathtub and the Boston shelter mayor's goodbye. And here's what it has to say. I tried to build a place where our children could live comfortably. I'd do anything for them, even at the expense of taxpayers' money. The mob has broken through, and it's only a matter of time before they reach the lower level. I left the key to the safe with one of the attendants. I, I forget his name. Anyway, goodbye, my darling. So, yeah, uh, interpret that how you will, but basically he's saying that he knows that there's people storming the shelter and he's going to give himself for whatever the cause may be. That correlates with what we already saw. Now, you might be saying, well, yeah, it's not like the most groundbreaking thing, and it's not. But what I'm showing you is that the more I pay attention, the more the details of this world line up and make sense. And it's wonderful, but it's not over yet when it comes to the Boston Mayoral Shelter, because now we come in here, and here's what the guards had to say about the whole fiasco. We found the mayor in the tub last night. Locked the door before the missus found him. Didn't want her to see him like that. I told her he'll be back soon and not to worry. In the meantime, I told her to take the children down to the utility room in the gym and so there we have the guards saying that they found the mayor and because they didn't want the the mayor's wife to freak out or something like that they told her to come down to the gym and hide in the utility room could we see any evidence that she indeed did hide in the utility room well you come down here there she is the fact of the matter is everything that this game tells me i should expect i can go confirm all of the stories line up. And here's our last one. I've been told to take the children to a safe place near the gym. I convinced you we needed all of this stuff if the worst ever happened. Now look at what's happening. All my fault. Love you, honey. Oh, hi there. Well, this is awkward. Uh, so I was kind of in the middle of telling people how good this world is. Oh, you're not supposed to be here. Okay. Uh, well, phooey. This isn't really going to plan. Uh, time to go hot. Oh, a synth strider. You take a lot of damage, sir. How about more damage? More bullets. There we go. That's the solution. Just more bullets. 
the enemy didn't die with some bullets, give them more bullets. That is the solution. The environment is telling me a story. And if I pay attention, the game rewards me with all of the things lining up. So I see skeletons, I ask questions, and then I find... Oh, guys, I'm trying to monologue here. Will you give me a second? He starts monologuing. He starts <laughs> monologuing. Okay, this is a little bit stressful. Guys, I'm trying to talk about how good the environment is here, and I'm going to die. Oh, dog meat, you are the best puppy ever. Oh, I love you so much. You deserve all of the... What do dogs like? Kibble? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have a dog. Thank you, dog meat. Actually, I never took the time to learn his name in this particular playthrough, so he's just dog. Thank you, dog. Oh, you are a lovely dog. Anyway, so what I was just saying about this place, when, before the robots decided to take over and we go all I am, no, not I am legend, that's a different movie. What am I thinking? I, robot. So many eyes in Will Smith, I don't know. But anyway, the, the whole point I'm trying to make here is that, is it groundbreaking and revolutionary? No, but it's consistent and the game rewards you because the, the world is so detailed that the more I pay attention, the better it looks. Now, here we have one of my favorite things that I stumbled across in this game, and that would be these towers. Not really the towers themselves, it's what happens when you extend the towers. So let me go ahead and do that and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, if you look in the top left, you will see Distress Signal Found. This is one thing I absolutely love that they do in this game. This particular tower gives you a distress signal, and most of the towers do give you a distress signal. If you do go ahead to your radio and pull up the distress signal, this is what you're going to get. Just a lot of static. But the thing is, if you walk closer to the source of the distress signal, you're going to start getting and hearing a clearer message. Hello? Anyone? I'm trapped in the jewelry So not only was that, I think, actually, fairly good voice acting, but you see she says she's in Fallon's department store, which means I'm guessing we're heading the right way. And she says that she's in a, a safe room and that there's a button under a counter somewhere and that she's uh, in the jewelry store. So I wonder if just paying attention to the environment, no quest marker, no nothing, just the environment and the game itself giving us a little message can we go find this girl? Now, when you enter Fallon's, this is what you're going to be greeted with. It's so bad. There's blood everywhere. We are still pretty severely under leveled, so I'm going to be a little bit careful here. Uh, we're going to try to stealth our way downstairs because the jewelry store is downstairs in this particular shopping mall. Alrighty, let's kick things off, shall we? Oh, he's still very high level compared to us. Well, this is going to be fun. All right, doggy, I'm going to need your assistance. Oh, he did not care at all about our, all of our bullets. We put a very large... I just shot a meat sack. Um, we put a very large amount of bullets into him, and it just made him tickled. He was he was just... He giggled a little bit. You know, he let out... He, you know, when somebody, like, gets your foot, and they're just like... <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, could you stop that, please? That, that's kind of what just happened there. It was kind of cute, because, you know, you don't expect a super mutant to do that. But, you know, at the same time, he is still trying to shoot me in the face. So, you know, as, as cute as the situation may be, there are maybe more appropriate times to be um, enjoying a little bit of a giggle together. Just stay right there. You just stay right there. That's right. Your arm is going to take so much damage. You are going to die from just being sore in the arm. Yes, this, uh, by the way, I know I did an overpowered gun build in Cyberpunk, but if you want an overpowered build in Fallout 4, really, it's just let the environment just make your enemies stupid. That's pretty much all you have to do. Um, like I said, this game, I think the world is fantastic. The AI, on the other hand, could use some improvement. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. All right, now, so we're in the Fallon's Jewelry Store, um, and in fact, what's cool is that, you know, appropriately... Oh, hi! Uh, well, you weren't supposed to return. Oh, this is awkward. I'm a strength build, so I can do this right... Oh! Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Man, people are gonna learn very quickly that I love the Emperor's New Groove. So she says there's a button under the counter. Well, looky, looky, I found something. It is indeed a button that I push, and looky there, we've got a secret room. Oh, look, it's the ham radio, and it's the girl who got trapped in here. 
I know a lot of this may not seem like much, but cumulatively, you get awesome narratives, and it's packed everywhere, and there's these distress signals are everywhere, there's tons of them everywhere, and you can just have wonderful experiences where the world is giving you everything that's happening. It's giving you a narrative, and it rewards you just for paying attention. And that's right, I brought you back to Red Rocket. Uh, the reason is because I wanted to show you what I was talking about with the junk. So I talked earlier, why am I crouched? <laughs> Sneaking along here just in case some potatoes see me, I guess. I don't know. When I mentioned the junk, I said that it sets itself apart from Skyrim in that all of the junk has usefulness. So if we go here and I go over to the junk, you can see <laughs> bloat fly gland, thank you, um, has acid, but cotton yarn has cloth, duct tape, and he's, oh, duct tape is just god tier in this game. Here's why I say that's so good. Around every corner, there's a lot of detail in this game. There's trash, there's junk, there's papers on the ground, there's dirt and detritus and rubble and tires and stacks. There's level upon level of detail. Now, here's the question. How do you get people to notice it? How do you get people to experience all the detail you put in this game? Well, you put junk everywhere. And not just junk, but junk that has a meaning. And it gets to the point where they so well incentivized the junk in this game that it becomes like crack. I love when people say like crack who've obviously never done crack. Where I am just looking around every little corner because God forbid I miss a roll of duct tape or a can of oil because that would be the worst. And in the process, they have beautifully incentivized me to search every square inch of this wonderful world they created. Now this is a relatively small one, but here's another thing that's pretty cool. This is one of the things that once again just showed me you pay attention, you get rewarded in this game. So, okay, I can open this lid. Well, hang on, it's vacuumed shut. But, hang on, we got a hose here. I open the breaker, I flip the switch. You come back up here, you open the lid, and voila. You just made money. Now, this is just another interesting thing about the world. If you're doing any of the outposts, you're probably going to get sent over to Corvega to kill the head of Corvega, which is Jared. So as you can see, we just killed him. And what's really cool is that there is some level of the world adapting to you. You can see that it recognizes certain achievements that you make. And they they indicate that in things you can read throughout the world and how some of some limited interactions will change. Alrighty, so we went from Corvega, made our way down to the Beantown Brewery. Brewer, 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 brewery. I can't, uh, that's a word, I just can't. It's kind of like rural. I can't do that, it's just, uh, me and that word just don't get along. We are just not friends. Anyway, so you're gonna wanna come over here, and we got some people to take out. Ow, that had to hurt. Ow, I'm actually getting shot, and it looks like you're actually taking the worst end of this one. Not sure how that works, but okay, there we go. Anyway, that's Tower Time. We killed him, but here's what I came over here to show you. It's not that you can get the Gwyneth Brew re recipe, because that I don't care about. It's actually this terminal right here. Well, if you look here at the Beantown Brewery in the terminal here, you can see an entry called Corvega. I wonder what that has to be. Seems somebody took down Jared. Much as I hated that chem hungry guy, he was no pushover. We're gonna need more guns. So, because I killed Jared, it has changed an entry. Well, actually, it's created an entry on this terminal. That term, that entry wouldn't obviously not have been there before I killed Jared. Again, is it the most revolutionary thing I've seen in gaming? No, but look at all the different layers this world has. So do you remember early on when I told you about Thicket Excavations and the quest that you can do there? Well, there's a certain level you have to be and a pretty short amount of time that you have to wait. And suddenly when you come back here, a bunch of bandits have moved in. That's a bit odd, isn't it? Oh, your head just exploded. That's awkward. That's probably, she probably just had to sneeze real bad. And you ever hold in a sneeze so hard that your head just pops off? Yep, that's happened to me a few times. It, it'll grow back. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine, girl. Yes, that's right, you have bullets, but I have Flex, and Flex has a bat with blades on it, because, I don't know, a bat wasn't bad enough. Oh, that sounded like it hurt, like a son of a gun. Yeah, that's right, you can you can stab me with your knife, that's fine. Oh, look, you you missed, and... Oh, okay. Dude, I'm trying to dunk on you, just let me have this, come on. Oh, come on, this is going on YouTube. Okay, there we go, that's fine. That, you know, that was competent enough, I suppose. 
Anyway, I'm not gonna draw this out any longer than I have to. I just wanted to bring you here to show you what happens when you go away for a while. And to show you that Sully Mathis, the guy that you- Wait, where's his clothes? He's supposed to- He's supposed to have clothes on. Well, I guess Sully decided to make this a nudist raider camp, so eh, that's a weird decision. Not normally the decision he makes, but I guess Fallout 4 never changed, right? Anyway, that's Sully Mathis. He'll create this raider camp for you. And um, again, just showing you that the world has some limited ways that it adapts to you, including right out of the gate with one of the quests that you can play pretty much right away. Alrighty, so it is time to go back to the West Everett Estates. Uh, we are now level 21, so we're a significantly higher level than we were when we first tried and failed pretty quickly. Um, it was it was not pretty. You didn't see all the tries, and you saw some pretty nasty stuff. He still has a great butt, though. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and get ourselves on in here, and we need to first wipe out the super mutants. This is going to be fun. This is going to be hard. There's a guy. It's not Brick. What's his name? Is it Hammer? I think it might be Hammer. I think Hammer's his name. Anyway, there's a super mutant boss in here that we're going to have to be dodging like crazy because he hurts like a son of a gun. Oh, Flex is hurting. Flex is hurting. More drugs, Flex. Alrighty. Here we go. I don't know. I just felt like swinging at something there. Oh, did you... So that would be Hammer. He has a RPG and apparently is a sniper with said RPG. I'll be right back. Alright, so we're going to go with a little bit more of a long-ranged approach here, um, at least to begin with, so we actually are quite good with automatic weapons at this point. As you may be able to tell, I don't know why, I don't know what accent that was, I don't know why it happened, but it did, and we're just going with it. Yeah, there he is, his name is Hammer, so I, I guess that, that would be, now this, this, this wooden fence is apparently able to take RPG rockets and keep standing, which is my favorite because, boy, howdy, would that have hurt. Um, nope, that's not the gun I wanted. I wanted the one that has lots of bullets, many of the bullets, all, every of the bullets. This is actually a very common ritual for, oh, fudge, that's a grenade. Very common ritual for super mutants, and he's dead. Okay, so... A little bit of kiting later, and, well, I'm going to take the Super Sledge. There's definitely no doubt about that. So, we came here, and what did we fight? We fought the big green baddies, the Super Mutants. But then we'll see there's dead raiders. So, one of the first questions has to be, um, why are there dead raiders everywhere? Then, you'll also notice that, unlike a lot of other places, the West Everett Estates has sort of a makeshift wall that it looks like that's built up. And it's made from a lot of weird stuff. We have 18-wheelers, and we have tires, and we have cars, and things like that. As if somebody tried to just makeshift throw up a wall around here. Why is the West Everett Estates so different than a lot of places? Well, let me show you. There's in here a terminal. This would be Lance's terminal. I'm not going to take the time to read them all to you, but I'll kind of give you a summary of what you're going to find out when you read these logs. So here you learn that this person, Lance, was on his way back home when everything hit the fan and he finally made it back. And they talk about making a wall. So this wall was a concept from back when the bombs fell. That's pretty cool. Now we find out that with this second entry that he did indeed make the wall and that he did it with Wayne's help. He also talks about a bunker with fresh water in it and that he used to think was a stupid idea, but now he thinks it's smart. Now, from the next entry, you're going to find out that Leon is an absolutely stupid moron because he tells a band of raiders that they have a walled community here, and Lance knows that they're going to see these guys again because he told them, hey, we have this walled fort fresh for the taking. And, of course, the next entry is from those raiders who uh, think it's wonderful that they just took a freshly walled city. So we have here, the reason there's raiders here is because they were told about this walled area by someone who thought they were friends and uh, apparently wasn't very good at judging character. Obviously, the super mutants came and cleared them out, but that's why there's raider corpses. Now, if you remember, he said that there was a bunker that he laughed at. Uh, here is that very bunker that we were told about. Now, also, you're going to want to make sure if you're doing a melee build, get the ripper. You'll thank me later. 
get the Ripper, upgrade the Ripper, kill everything with the Ripper. Anyway, let's go down the bunker. And then we have Wayne's terminal. So here we find out that this is three days after the bombs fell and Wayne and his boys were able to make it to the bunker. Now, Bonnie is Wayne's wife and he's going to mention that she was not able to make it out. She's still at the hospital, at least the last that he knew. Now, here's an interesting one. I actually want to read an excerpt from this just so you can see what's happening. It's been three months since the bombs fell. I left the bunker for the first time last night. Our plan to tap into the main from the water tower worked, but the piping took more duct tape than expected and was leaking pretty bad. We didn't have any more in the house, so I tried to sneak over to the Cobb's house across the street. He was working with a construction crew in the neighborhood, so I figured he might have some. I was in Ron's den, where he'd been working on that Nuka-Cola machine, and must not have heard him over the distant gunfire and explosions. There was just that cold barrel pushed up against the back of my head suddenly. He told me to turn around slowly, and oh god, Bonnie, his face. The radiation had hit him hard. His hair was falling out and half his face looked melted. I begged him to stop, but he put the gun in my mouth and cocked back the hammer. I heard a gunshot, but when I opened my eyes, Ron was falling to the ground and I spotted Lance from down the street up on our roof. He saw the whole thing and saved my life. Said he's got a plan and to meet him tomorrow night. Now remember when I said everything this game tells you about the world, especially in the West Everett Estates, you can confirm? Well, he came here for duct tape, here's the Nuka-Cola machine, and then he turned around, and there was his neighbor, who then put the gun in his mouth, and then got shot for his trouble. I just spread his legs, that's weird. I'm so sorry, that's not how I meant to leave your corpse. But he's dead there on the ground, because somebody was on the roof from across the street, took him out. Everything that this game is telling me, I can confirm, down to the fact that they put the skeleton there. Now, I want to read you this because this is another detail, just a small detail, that tells you just how much attention to detail is in this world. To get the biggest part done in a night, we stole a couple trucks from the Irish Pride shipyard nearby. I didn't ask how Leon knew how to hotwire a truck. Lance had us pull them around to the edges of the yards to start the wall. Truth be told, I flipped mine and darn near took out the house. Now, as you can see, we can confirm they did indeed use trucks for the wall. However, I'm expecting that if I walk the perimeter of this wall, I'm going to find one truck that was flipped because he says that he flipped his truck and almost took out the house and wouldn't you? Oh my gosh. Talk about ruining the moment, man. That's not cool. But wouldn't you know it right here? We have a truck that was flipped while they were making the wall. Is it the most groundbreaking thing ever? No. But I hope what I'm showing you here is that so much has gone into this world. This is a complete package. This is why I say none of these are unique in and of themselves. But altogether, I've never seen a world that has a more complete package and as good of a world as Fallout 4. Let me show you a little bonus item, though. One last thing just to show you how cool this is. Do you remember how his wife worked at a hospital? If you come all the way over here... You can find this, Bonnie's Hollow Tape. Wayne, I'm leaving this message with Marcy in case you come looking for me. One of the other nurses told me she heard a radio signal that sounded like you and the boys. I don't know if it's true. If you're still out there, but we've got a way out, and I'm going to try to find you. So there you have it. But not only is there all that detail in West Everett, I'm paying close enough attention. I get to see the other side too. He couldn't get to his wife because she was at work and we get to see something from her. Are there a few things that I think could be critiqued? Sure. Why is Codsworth still flying when we know that they need Mr. Handy fuel? Uh, that's a little hard to explain away. Uh, you could say maybe they refill them themselves, but I don't see evidence of that. But obviously they need fuel. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I have never seen a more complete package than the Fallout 4 world. So there you have it. A brief demonstration of why I have to go with Fallout 4 as the best world in gaming. But what do you think? Did I convince you, or did I at least give you a better appreciation for the world? 
Did I miss anything about the Fallout 4 world that you think should be mentioned? And what's your favorite world in gaming? Please let me know below or in the Hangout Discord server, which is linked in the description below. I love getting to chat with you guys, and I'm sure you're going to have a lot of great recommendations. But I know what you're saying. I want to see you in another one of these great worlds you mentioned. Well, Cyberpunk 2077 has a great one, and here you can see a fun video where I show you how to unlock and dominate the secret ending. You should check it out. I'll see you for the next Hangout, everybody. Have a great day, and goodbye.